to come on. I want to open in a word of prayer. Let me ask you to stand at this time. Amen. Gracious and merciful Father, Lord, we give you thanks and praise and honor and glory, God. For this is the day that you had made, God, we would rejoice and be glad in it, Father. What a pleasure, what an honor to be found in the land of the living this morning with all our faculties in Taka. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father, God, we place this service into your hands this morning. That, God, that you will touch the ministers, uh, the worship ministers, the musicians, the technicians, the ushers. Uh, Father, Lord, every aspect of this service, we place it into your hand this morning. We say, let God arise in this place uh, and let the enemy be scattered in the name of Jesus. Uh, so, Father, we thank you for what you have done, what you are doing, and what you are about to do within this service. Uh, in Jesus' mighty and precious name, with thanksgiving, and everyone say, Amen. Amen. Help me welcome the worship leaders this time, as they will lead us in a time of worship. Hallelujah. 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 Father God, we give you praise. We give you honor. We give you glory, God, for you are worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. You, O oh God, are worthy to be exalted, O oh God. You are worthy to be lifted up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come, let's praise the Lord this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we bless your name. We give you praise, O oh God. We give you honor. We give you glory. For you are worthy to be praised. You are worthy to be exalted, O oh God. Father God, you are worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. 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 Isn't God good this morning? Hallelujah. 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 It's a good thing to be in the house of the Lord this morning. And this morning we're going to clap and we're going to sing. And we're going to shout praises unto our God. Our most high God. For he is worthy to be praised. He is worthy to be exalted. He is worthy. And Father God, we bless your name. We honor you, O God. We honor you. We honor you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come let us praise. Hallelujah. We worship your name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, we worship your name, Lord. Come on, come let us praise. Come let us praise. Lift up your eyes.
Come on, keep the praises going. Our God is still a miracle working God this morning. Our God is still a healer this morning. Our God is King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Hallelujah. Give him all the praise this morning. Hallelujah. We make a boast in our God this morning. There is none like unto you, King Jesus. Father, we bless you. We bless you. We bless you. We bless you. Father, we thank you for your presence. Oh, God, we thank you for your presence. We thank you for your visitation this morning, God. We thank you for what you are doing this morning. We thank you for breaking every chain this morning. In the mighty name of Jesus, there is none like unto you, King Jesus. Oh, God, we give you praise this morning. We bless your name. We bless your name. We bless your name. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. Your name, the name of the Lord is greatly to be praised. And every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, God, we are believing in you this morning. We trust in you this morning. But there is none like unto you, Father. So many persons didn't make it today, but Father, we are here in your house this morning. Hallelujah! Father, we bless you. Lord, we bless you. Father, we bless you. Lord, we give you praise this morning. Lord, we are thanking you this morning for everything that you have done, oh God. Sometimes we're not even deserving of your blessing, but God, you are a faithful God. Thank you for keeping us. Thank you for your salvation. Thank you, God, for wrapping your arms around us this morning. For your love, for your kindness, for your forgiveness, Lord. We just worship you and we honor you. We say, great are you, Lord, and greatly to be praised. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We'll be seated this morning. Hallelujah. 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 We welcome each and every one of you again this morning. Those who are watching us from their homes, uh, we want to invite you and just ask you to share and like our page that you will be able to receive our notifications when the church is having some activities you'll be able to be up to date with it amen those who are in house nice to see you this morning see the blessing amen our god is such an awesome god hallelujah we take it for granted that we have life this morning hallelujah you know it's always a different feeling when you feel the presence of the lord you know that god is in the midst that something is going to happen. Chains will be broken this morning. Miracles will take place. Healing will take place. Deliverance will take place. Once you're in the presence of the Lord, you guarantee that something good is going to happen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Just allow me to go into a few announcements quickly. Hallelujah. So we every Monday. We have prayer meeting on the Zoom platform from 6 p.m. All right. Um, let me I encourage you to be part of that online service. That's where we, we meet for one hour each Monday and we spend that time with the Lord. All right. And we have Bible study on Tuesday in the same Zoom platform from 6 p.m. Where we come with the questions. You're reading your Bible and you don't have, you know, sometimes you don't understand everything. Come prepare, come make way questions to, you know, to, to, to the minister, whoever's in charge of the session that day would surely and gladly take your questions and answer you. Amen. Friday we have our prayer meeting in house at 7 p.m. We encourage each and every one of you to be part of that service also. At this time, you know, let me before we even move on, let me just encourage you to bring a friend to church. Bring someone, a co-worker, a neighbor, someone within your vicinity who, you know, needs to know about God, this God that we serve. Bring them to church on a Friday night. Don't just tell them about it. You come with them. 
be part of that service. Amen. Hallelujah. We continue to believe God that God will do something great within that service as well. At this time, I want to like us to go into the giving of our tithes and offering. It's a time of giving, a time where God loves a cheerful giver. Where we believe in the love of so much, so many things. You know, and we need to give back at times. So we give in this morning, we have we give in to WIS, we give in to the those of us who made that uh, pledge uh, to the property. Let's honor those pledges as we give this different ministry to, to missions and buildings. Amen. So take what you're offering with me and have a smile on your face this morning as we give unto the Lord this morning. Amen. Stand with me this morning as we go before the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just lift your offering with me this morning. Gracious and merciful Father, Lord, we come before you once again, before your throne of grace and of mercy. And Lord, as we give unto you, Lord, just a fraction that would you have blessed us with this morning, Lord, we say, God, that you will have your way with it, O Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. God, so many persons are here this morning giving and believing and trusting in you this morning for so many different things. That God, our needs may differ this morning, but God, meet each person at the point of every need and grant us our heart desires in the mighty name of Jesus. God, some persons are believing you for a house, God, maybe a vehicle, God, a spouse, children, Father, Lord God. We pray, God, that you touch. God, that you stretch out your hand this morning and bless your people, Father. Some put their trust in horses, some in chariots. Oh God, some even in play with machines, but God, this morning, we will remember the name of the Lord. And Father, as we give, we give with a cheerful heart that God, it will be used for the furtherance of your kingdom. And God, that you will continue to work miracles within our lives, Father God. That you will make a way where there seems to be no way, Father. Oh God, where we feel like giving up, God, you or your hand will be upon our lives that you will take us to that another level, Father, where we need to be in you. In the mighty name of Jesus. So Father, we say thank you for doing it. In Jesus' mighty and precious name with thanksgiving and everyone sing. Amen. Amen. Let's wait on your worship team as he ushers wait on us. Hallelujah. We came to give God praise this morning with our love offering. Hallelujah. We worship you, Lord. Hallelujah. Come on. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Every word and worship with one accord. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah to our God. Glory hallelujah is to our God. Every praise, every praise. Every word and worship with one accord. 
praises to our God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As we remain standing this morning. Hallelujah. Allow me to bring on our speaker who will come and minister the word of God this morning. And I know the Lord has placed a word within our heart to come and share. So put your hands this morning and welcome Minister Michelle Fonten. And what we want the Lord to do with her? We say, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Good morning, everyone. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. wherever you are where you are in the group we welcome you hallelujah I want to say good morning to our pastors this morning god bless you guys amen it's good to be in the house of the lord this morning hallelujah <laughs> oh god god is a good god god is a good god i want the worshipers to come hallelujah can you all come hallelujah thank you jesus Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. God is truly awesome. You know, there's a song, Brother Justin. Do you know it? The song that we sang this morning. Yes, you. You know that. You know it? Yes, you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Could you just sing it for us this morning? Yes, you. Before he starts, you know, yes, you means Jesus, huh? And we come to church to meet with God. We come to be in the presence of God. And there is nothing God loves more than his people worshiping him. God, the Bible says that he inhabits the praises of his people. So we are here to worship God. So I just want you to tap in wherever you are. Those of you on Facebook, put on the spoon a little bit. Don't worry, the food won't burn. You just load on the heat. And I just want us to just exalt the name of Jesus we say it all the time that name that is above every other name that name when we call upon him deliverance take place healing take place some of us we are here and we need a touch from God we need a word from God we need God to come through right now for us I want you to just tap in this morning Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody say Jesus. Somebody say Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes, you Yes, you. 
beloved. My beloved is the most beautiful among thousands.
Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, God. Karabande, robo shata. Hallelujah. How many know what the enemy meant for evil? God has a way of turning it around for good. I don't know what is your situation this morning. I don't know what you're believing God for. But listen, when you call upon him, God says he will answer. He shall deliver. Men will fail. Men will fail you time and time again. But the God that we serve, he never fails. He never fails this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I just want to ask you as I pray and as I preach, pray for me. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus is Lord. Could you turn your Bibles with me to the book of Nehemiah chapter 6? Hallelujah. Nehemiah chapter 6. And we're reading from verse 1. Hallelujah. I'm going to preach this word this morning. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah. When all found, could you say amen? I'm just feeling my whole body is cramping. The blood of Jesus, hallelujah. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. The word of God says in Nehemiah chapter 6, and we read in verse 1 to 3, and then 15 to 16. Now it came to pass when Sambalat and Tobiah and Geshem the Arabian and the rest of our enemies heard that I had built the wall and that there was no breach left therein, though at that time I had not set up the doors upon the gate, that Sambalat and Geshem sent unto me, saying, Come, let us meet together in some one of the village in the plain of Uno. But they taught to do me mischief. And I sent messengers unto them saying, I am doing a great work. So that I cannot come down. Why should the work cease? Why I leave it and come down to you? And verse 15 and 16 it reads. So the walls was finished in the 20th and 5th day of the month of Elu. In 52 days, the walls were completed. And it came to pass, verse 16, and it came to pass that when all our enemies heard thereof, and all the heathens that were about us saw these things, they were much cast down in their own eyes. For they perceived that this work was wrought of the Lord. Hallelujah. We give God praise and thanks for his word this morning. We give God glory and we give God honor. God's word is already blessed. And we thank God this morning. Hallelujah. We thank God for his presence. God is in this house. I said God is in this house. And he's going to do a mighty work. Hallelujah. God wants to meet with us. God wants to do a great work in our lives. Hallelujah. So Father, we thank you for your word, God. I pray, O oh God, that your word will fall upon the hearts and the ears of your people, God, that they would hear, God. And God, that they would receive, O oh God, and they would be encouraged, Father. Encouraged to go the extra mile, O oh God. Encouraged to get back up and go again, God. Encouraged to start, God, if they haven't started as yet, God. They will be encouraged to start, O oh God. And God, that they will be able to complete and finish what you have started in their lives, God. Father, we give you thanks and we give you praise. In Jesus' name, amen. You may have your seats. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> oh, God. God is a good God. 
He is a good God. Today, I want to share on the topic, finish it. Finish it. Finish whatever you have started. Finish it. God says, finish it this morning. And if you haven't started as yet, listen, you need to get up. You need to get up and start. Amen? Hallelujah. In the book of Nehemiah, we look at the name Nehemiah. It means to comfort. God comforts. Nehemiah was a Hebrew in Persia. He was the cupbearer to the king Artaxerxes. His duty was to make sure that the wine that the king drank was not poisonous. That is a job. I don't want it. <laughs> he was the wine tester. He also served as a trusted servant and close advisor. Nehemiah, the Bible said, when Hanani came, Nehemiah inquired of him. He was asking him, how is Jerusalem doing? How is the Jews doing? And the report that Nehemiah got, it was not a good one. It was reported that the Jerusalem was broken down. And the gates were consumed by fire. The Jews were in trouble. The Bible said that Nehemiah, when he heard this, he went into mourning for some days. The man began to pray and fast. No, this is not his family. Brother Kerry, he's not praying for his family, his wife, his son. But he heard what was going on in the land of Jude and Jerusalem. And he began to pray and he began to fast. My God. The Bible said the time came for him to come before the king to test the wine. And the king saw his countenance. Listen, you come in before the king, you have to be looking good, you know. Because anytime something wrong with you, the king know that wine ain't good. So he's not going to partake of it. But Nehemiah came, although he was afraid, he came before the king. And the king knew that, listen, God will always put it in the hearts of men, even unsaved men. The king realized, listen, this countenance of Nehemiah, it was not because of sickness. But it was a sickness, a sadness of heart. I want to ask us this morning, how many of us are concerned about the work of God? How many of us has it reached our hearts that we begin to pray and we begin to fast for the things of God? Not for what we want, you know, the house and the land. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the work of God. Jesus. The king noticed his countenance and he knew it was sorrow of heart. And Nehemiah began to explain to the king. He told him what was happening. And he said, if I find favor with you, king, grant me the permission to go to Jerusalem. We know the story. He was granted the permission. And not only that, listen to me. You see, when you're doing the work of God, God will provide. He will provide. You don't have to worry where the money coming from, what he's going to do. God says he will do it and he will do it. Once he places it in your heart. The Bible said that Nehemiah went to Asap, the forest keeper. He got the letters to go to Jerusalem. He got the letter to get every single material he needed. Listen, God provides this morning. I was telling them earlier on, I said, I don't worry about money. I'm not worrying about money, house, or land. Listen, those things are going to be added. Once I focus on what I have to do for God, God will take care of the rest. My God, Nehemiah was willing to take the task that the Lord laid upon his heart. I want to ask you, what has God laid on your heart? What it is that you're just sitting on it? 
You're waiting for, I don't know what, but God has laid something on each one of us hearts. God has purpose and destiny for each one of us that are sitting here this morning. I am no special because I'm up here. We all have gifts and talents. God has placed things inside of us so we can reach the lost. It's not just me. I'm comfortable with I'm being safe. And my family or my friends or my neighbor or my community is going to hell. Oh Lord God, you take me way off, Miss Silver. Listen, Nehemiah was willing to take the task. And anytime you say yes to God, anytime you say yes to the work of God, listen, the enemy is going to come. He is coming. I was telling them earlier on, I said when I got saved, I think that didn't harm in me. I in God, I shielded, I covered, nothing in coming to her. Huh? When he first blow hit me, so I said, but God, what is this? I said, with you. <laughs> Trials are going to come. Testings are going to come. Hallelujah. These men, they called Sambala, Tobiah, and Gishim. They were Nehemiah's opposition. They were men, and they were opposing the work. Anytime you set your heart to do things for God, listen, the enemy is going to come in. He's going to try to stop you. That's why you have to know the God that you serve. These men were willing to plan to stop the work. They sent letters to Nehemiah. Imagine that. A wall that do him concern only. All his outsiders. Send letters to Nehemiah telling him they wanted to meet with him. But Nehemiah refused. Listen, there are times coming in your life, things are going to be presented to you and you have to say no. Nehemiah refused. He refused to come down. He refused to move. The Bible said, Nehemiah sent messengers unto them. He said, I am doing a great work. Why must I come down? Why must I leave what I am doing to come to you? You ain't email for me. If you was giving me something, I could understand. But you're giving me absolutely nothing. You want me to leave what I'm doing to come to you. Listen, God said, pride to rise. This was a determined man. He was a focused man. He said, I cannot come down. I want to encourage you. Whatever is your purpose, whatever is your destiny, whatever God has placed in your life, listen, tell yourself, I can accomplish it. Tell yourself, I, Michelle Fountain, can accomplish it. Everything you need, God promised he will supply. We don't have to worry. Whatever the business is, whatever it is, listen, God will provide. If it's a career you're looking at, if it's a business, my God, if it's a home, whatever it is, God already provided for that. He knew you before the foundation, before even the foundation, before he created you. He already put everything in alignment that you need. The people that you have to meet. The people that has destined for your life. God has already aligned them. All you have to do is be obedient and follow. My God. You can start this morning. The Bible says we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Sometimes it seems impossible. Eh? Sometimes it can be very hard. From our eye view, listen, sometimes it can seem like, God, I can't do this. God, it's too much, God. God, I can't bear this anymore, God. But I want you to know this morning, God says, you can finish. And if you have not started, God says to start. 
Nehemiah, the Bible said, he knew who he served. That's why he could have said what he said. I am doing a great work. I am not coming down to you. Sometimes we have to get radical and say, listen, I have time. I don't have time for this. I am about my father's business. Jesus never played when he was on the earth. He came to do a work and he did it. Nehemiah said, why should the work stop? Listen, we have authority. We have authority in the name of Jesus. We are not powerless Christians. We are not weaklings. We are children of the most high God. I don't know if we understand this. Listen, we are heirs of the king. The Bible said, whatever you ask, Nehemiah wanted material he asked for it and he got it I want to ask you this question Nehemiah listen Nehemiah asked some pertinent questions I want to I want you to answer in yourself why are you here why are you at St. James Pentecostal is it just for numbers Why are you here? God has placed a purpose inside of you. And young people, I want to encourage you. You could serve God. You can serve God. God called me at a young age. Listen, I didn't, I didn't always walk the path. I made mistakes. I'm not perfect. Nobody is. But God do not want you to remain there. God wants to raise up a generation of young people that his work can continue. And I want to encourage your parents. Sometimes the children and them, and I know sometimes they would go, you know, they would say some things, but listen, encourage your children in the things of God. Encourage your children in the things of God. I want to say to you this morning, stop worrying about what people may say or do. Stop worrying, God says this morning. And use the authority that he has given. God says he has given you authority to tread upon scorpions and serpents. Listen, we have all power over the enemy. There is nothing that the enemy can do to harm you. The weapons are going to form. They will form, but they will not prosper. People will be people everywhere you go. People will have opinions. It may be towards you good, or good towards you or bad. People are people. If Jesus had studied what the Pharisees and the Sadducees said. You think he would have did what he did? And fellas, and I was miserable. I don't get vexed with them when I read any Bible. I said, God, 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 you know. I would have done say, whoops, all the girls out of here. <laughs> Thank God I'm not God. <laughs> Jesus did not listen to the Pharisees. If he had listened to them, he would not complete his his job, the work that he came to do. Listen, Jesus associated himself with his disciples. The Bible said when he came, he gathered his disciples. He had a circle of men who were like-minded like him, who were, who were willing to work the work. Patrick sang the song this morning. When you, how it goes? When you see, if you see him, he's working. When you see him, he's working. He never stopped. Right. That's the song. Jesus never stopped working. So why are we not working? Why are we not doing what God says to do? I Listen, I don't want to be no fat Christian. Eh? And when I say fat, I mean in the spirit. Some of us, we so fat that we burst in in the spirit. And we're not sharing what we have. When God brought you into this house, when God allowed you to sit on that seat, it's not your seat. 
Some say it is your seat. Long time we used to pay for a seat in church when the pastor raised the offering. And he says, it's not your seat. It's a seat for you to come, study the word of God, be nurtured, be fed, and go back out. Go and spread the word of God. Whether it's on your job, whether it's in your home, whether it's in your school. Too many fat Christians in church and doing what? Some of that needs to come out. It needs to be spread all across the nation. I was sharing with them on last night. I said, listen, my brother died in October. That's the first one in my family died. My eldest brother. I said, God, did he make it? Did he make it? He would always mock me and make fun of me. and say, hey, let me priest come in. Let me priest at the family. Always mocking me. And at that time, I wasn't too well, so I couldn't go and visit him. And I said, God, God, if this thing was in my heart, I said, God, did he make it, God? Listen, some of us, we are right there in our homes, and we are not witnessing to our children. We are not telling our husband, even though he's unsaved, listen, Jesus loves you, and I love you too. Tell him you love him, and Jesus loves you too. If they vex, they vex. Jesus associated his friends with his friends and his father. Every time you read, you would see Jesus would be going into, the, into prayer with God. He would always spend time in God, with, in prayer with his father. That's where we get the victory. When we go to God in prayer, when we keep seeking after him. Nehemiah went to prayer. He began to seek God on behalf of Jerusalem. And God granted him favor with the king. What are you believing God for? Some of us, we want things from God. We want God to do great things in our lives. But are we spending that time with God? Some of us, we only want to eat chicken, chicken, chicken. Put on the chicken. If we lose our little pongs and the dress go fit here again. The pants go fit here again. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> oh, God. Listen, watch who you associate with. Watch who you associate with. There are some people you just don't need to meet in person. You don't need to meet them in person. You just need to send them a WhatsApp message. I will check you when I get the time. Or just send them a message. Now we're sending emojis is in trouble there. So watch how we're sending them emojis. Days, listen, their intentions are no good towards you. Some Balat and Tobias, they wanted to kill Nehemiah. They wanted to fight against them for the work of God. But thank God, no weapon form will prosper this morning. Listen to me. Stop allowing situations, circumstances, my God, the enemy to stop you. This is no time for excuse in the house of God. Time is drawing near. Time is drawing near. God is gathering his people. My husband gave me the okay to share it. He said, Michelle, one day we were praying and we were fasting. And he said, my God, I'm seeing the church. And he said, Michelle, it's not just St. James, but it all the church. My God, God wants to take his church to another level. And as his hands is grabbing, the church lifting it up, people are falling out. Every door entrance, they're falling out. I said, my God, have mercy. Have mercy, God. Stop allowing things to stop you this morning. You can finish it this morning. Stop saying, you see me, I good. I hold in my corner. The corner is not yours. It's not yours. You need to move from the corner and go to the corner and minister the word of God.
I'm not saying all of us are evangelists and, and evangelists and pastors. Listen, not everyone will be called to be minister, to be pastors, and to be evangelists. Listen, God have a place and a calling for you. You may be an elderly. Listen, my God, you can go to the home and witness to those in the home. You can go to your school and witness to your school. You can start a book, my God, a book club and begin to spread the word of God. Get the Bible. Let the Bible be the first book in your book club and you begin to share share the word this is no time to quit the Bible says God says no time to quit there are some friends and some people you have to let go of some of us we want to carry people where God is not calling them if God has called you listen God will equip you Sometimes we have to learn what it is to stand by ourselves, but we're not standing. We're standing by ourselves, but God is with us. Sometimes we have to let go of those friends. Tell your neighbor this morning, stay focused. Stay focused and finish it. I want to say to you, storms are going to arise. Trials and testings are going to come. Listen, when I was singing this message, I said, God, you want me to tell God? Oh, God, give me a little easy thing now. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I have to say what God says. I will be obedient to God. Storms will arise, but you will go to the other side. You will go to the other side. You will make it. The Bible says in Matthew 14, 22, from 22 to 31, I won't read because of time. This is Jesus. Jesus just fed the 5,000 hmm. and more. And he says to his disciples, he said, listen to me, I need you to go to the other side. Get in the boat and go to the other side. Listen, when Jesus speaks a word, it's already done. It's already done. We don't have to fight up. That word has already gone forth. Jesus said, get into the boat and go to the other side. The Bible said the disciples, they went into the boat. They got into the boat and they went away. And when Jesus had this first listen, the, the, the people, he went to pray. He went to pray. My God. The Bible said that prayer had to be sweet because it was the fourth watch. About 3 a.m. in the morning, Jesus comes. He comes walking on the water. The disciples, the boat are far off. And Jesus come walking. The disciples, my God, they got terrified. They said, it's a ghost. Look, it's a ghost. Jesus had to say to them, be of good cheer, it is I. Do not be afraid. Listen, the storm was raging. There was a storm. The Bible says the waves were going to and fro. It was gashing against the boat. The winds was blowing, my God. And Jesus comes walking on the water. Listen, no storm can stop the God that I serve. No storm will stop you this morning, my God. The Bible said... When Peter, when Jesus said, it is I, Peter said, God, if it's you, bid me to come. Bid me to come, Lord Jesus. The Bible said that Peter got up out the boat. I like Peter. The rest of the disciples, they stayed there. Peter got out the boat and he began to walk on water in the midst of the storm. That's why I said to you this morning, listen, you can walk through the storm. You can go through the desert. God is with you. The Bible said when Peter got out and he began to walk, he was looking at Jesus, my God. He was fixed on Jesus. He was walking towards Jesus. When Jesus is in the midst, my God, no storm can stop you. The Bible said, when Peter looked around and he saw, my God, what was happening. 
And that's where we falter and that's where we fail because we look at things. We look at what is happening. If Nehemiah had looked at and considered what Sambalat and they were doing, he would have never finished the work. Peter began to sink and we always beat up on Peter for this. Take your eyes off of God. Began to sink. And here we all walking on water. The Bible said greater works we will do. I ain't lying. I'm not lying. I went to the beach. Try to walk on water. It didn't happen. <laughs> it did not happen. My feet sank. <laughs> I said, God, increase my faith. Peter walked on water. The Bible said when he sank, listen, Jesus immediately, the Bible said, some version said straightway. Straightway he snatched him. And that's what God will do for us. He will never let us sink. Listen, when you're doing the work of God, listen, God will not allow the enemy to overtake you. Yes, he will allow things at times. Yes, he did it to, to Job, my God. Yes, he did it to Paul. He allowed the torn in Paul's ways. He allowed Job to be tested. But it's for our good. Sometimes God allows things so that we wouldn't get too high and too exalted that we forget God. Listen to me, Peter sank and God pulled him back out of the waters. And I was asking God, I said, God, you are to live for Peter. <laughs> Peter was a big man. I believe, and this is what I believe. I believe the both of them walked back to the boat. The Bible said when Jesus got in the boat, the storm ceased. And they did go to the other side. Listen to me. Whatever God has destined for you, whatever God says to finish, listen, you can finish it. Stop worrying about the finances. Stop worrying, oh God, God, who are you going to send or how are you going to start? Some of you all, God is, God is pushing you into promotion. And you're wondering if you're capable enough or if I can handle this. Why do you think God gave you the education? Why do you think God placed you there? I will leave that right there. Nehemiah, the Bible said, not only did Nehemiah went to work, but he, before he even began the work, the Bible said he went and inspect the walls. He went and take an inventory. He took a record, my sister. What God has placed inside of you, have you written it down? The Bible says write the vision, make it plain. Write whatever it is. Put it down on paper. Nehemiah took a record of what was going on, what was taking place and what needed to be done. So why? He could do the work correctly. Listen, I always say if I can't do it good for God, I don't want to do it at all. Because we go to work, we do a good job. We go and do our hair, we make sure and do a good job. So why when it comes to the things of God, any old help? No. We need to do it well. Nehemiah took record. My God. And listen, Nehemiah, Nehemiah went to Jerusalem and he did not tell those who were with him inspecting the wall what God placed in his heart. Sometimes we're too quick to speak. Sometimes God lays something in your heart. Oh gosh, keep it to yourself until God says X, Y, Z. We go and run and we, talk, we tell Tom, Dick, Harry, tell me, don't call his name. Larry. And up to now, we haven't consulted with God. Remember Joseph? Yes, God had a plan. But Joseph, brothers, my God, when Joseph started to talk, his brothers, my God, they wanted to kill him. They hated him, the Bible said. 
They took the young boy and they threw him into a pit. Thank God he was sold. But God always has a plan. He always has a plan. And God's plan must be fulfilled. If Nehemiah did not go, someone else would have gone. If you don't go, trust me, God is going to send somebody else. Nobody ain't going to cry out for me. Nobody. And no tree ain't going to cry out for me. I will praise the Lord. I will do the work of God. If I had to bend and go, I go in and do it. Listen to me. Not everyone will agree with you. And that is okay. Oh gosh. You ain't all that neither. <laughs> not everyone will agree with you. Some people will not like the way you do things. And that's okay. We are unique in our own way. If God make all of us the same, what a boring world it would be. Hallelujah. I want to encourage us this morning. The Bible says in Matthew 10, 22, you will be hated by everyone. You will be hated by nations, my God. You will be hated for my name's sake. But he shall endure to the very end. Listen, those who endure will be saved. Those who hang in there. Those who do the work of God. Listen and God will, you come before God. God will say, well done. My good and faithful servant. We all want to hear that. But are we doing the work? Are we doing the work? There should be no seats empty in the church. I have a problem with, face, with, 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 with Facebook. Yeah? And people in church. But we shall behave yourself. The church is open. Find yourself in the house of the Lord. If you're sick, I could understand that. If you're afflicted and you're in your bed, good. Well, not good that you're sick, but you could stay, right? But if nothing is wrong with you, what are you doing on Facebook? Find yourself in the house of the Lord. The Bible said, do not forsake the gathering. Do not forsake it. I have a real problem watching church on on. on Facebook I remember when the COVID came my pastor he had a problem with God. well both of we had the problem so I, I was glad I, didn't, I did not miss a church on Sunday every Sunday I mass up and I go and do what I have to do because God has called us to do a work just like Nehemiah, Nehemiah was, listen, Nehemiah was persistent. He was willing to do the work, even if it cost him his life. Listen, I want you to know, there are people waiting for you to fail. Just like Sambalat and they, when you read chapter 4 and verse 7, Sambalat and they were, they were angry at Nehemiah. They wanted Nehemiah to fail. There are people waiting for us to fail as God people but we must rise up and declare who God is. We have power. I said it before. We have word every Sunday after Sunday. Pastor Jules, he preaches. He preaches the word. What are we doing with what we have received? It's amazing, eh? The things that will get some people upset. The things that will cause some people to get upset. Sometimes the things does not even concern them. That wall had absolutely nothing to do with Sam Balatande. It had nothing to do with them. The walls was in a ruined state. And that's typical people. It's ruined, it's broken, and good. As soon as you begin to work, as soon as you begin to do something, here comes the Sambala Sunday. I want to ask you this morning, what is broken down? 
in your life? What is broken in your life this morning? Listen, Jesus can fix it. You think God couldn't build that wall by himself? He could have done it. Jesus can fix anything. There is nothing too far gone that God cannot reach. Nothing. All things are possible. Sometimes I say, God, I wonder if we understand what we call the that's when the time the, the, the precepts that we keep saying over and over. Do we understand the word? Nobody was talking about the wall. One like me, if I was in Sambalat and their days, I said, by rocks, oh yes. Rocks, oh, I don't have time for you. I am about my father's business. You have nothing to offer me. And that's what we have to do at times, get radical. Only you want to offend, offend the devil. Nehemiah said, I'm not coming down. We as God people, we ought not to give the enemy no room. Ephesians 4.27 says, give the enemy no opportunity. Do not allow the enemy to use you. You are a child of God. I want to encourage us this morning. Be aware of distractions. Be aware of destruction. They're going to come. The Bible says in John 10, 10, the thief cometh but for to steal, to kill and destroy. But God has come that you would have life. You can have life and you can have it more abundantly. Be ready to fight the good fight of faith. Right here in church, listen on Facebook. Some of you are facing some serious situations. You are depressed and oppressed. You feel like giving up, my God. You said, I've been in church, but it's not working for me. Listen, I'm here to tell you, God says, get back up from where you are. God has put his purpose and his destiny in your life. Do not allow the enemy to steal it. Listen to me, eh? I haven't really talked about it. <laughs> you see, when you're doing God's work, things are going to happen. And I remember, I won't say who it is, someone sent a witch to kill me. <laughs> Listen now. No witch, no warlock. No principality. Nothing is taking me out before my time. Nothing whatsoever. And we have to know who we are in God. Just like some ballots and they listen, they're going to send them. But we have to be able to resist the devil this morning. We have to be able to resist it. Listen, it does not matter what you have been through. Listen, God sees the pain. He knows the hurt. He sees the disappointment. He saw the turn down just yesterday. He saw the setbacks. He saw the say, listen, come back in a few months. God already saw what you have been through and what you are going through. And God promised, listen, when you call upon him, he will answer you. He will come and deliver you. He will set you free. He will put you on the path that you need to go. Nehemiah never allowed distractions. Five times they sent messengers unto Nehemiah. Listen, your enemy is going to be persistent. Eh? He's not going to give up as long as there is breath inside of you. He is not going to give up and we should not give up. We must hold on. Hold on to the promises of God. Hold on to the word of God. And walk in according to God's word this morning. The Bible says that God has a plan for us. A plan to prosper us and not to harm us. A plan to give us an expected end. 
You don't have to worry about your end. God has already destined it, you know. God went to our end and then he start all over again. Listen, you are the one that is responsible for fulfilling that what is between there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible said that there was a certain prophet named Shemaiah. When Nehemiah was going through so much, the Bible said that Nehemiah began to cry out to God. He said, God, strengthen me. Strengthen my hands, God. Listen, there are times that you're going to go through stuff. And all you can do is call upon the name of the Lord. Your husband will not be there. Your father, your mother will not be there. That's why you need to know the God that you serve. Nehemiah began to cry on the Lord. He said, oh God, strengthen my hands. Strengthen me, oh God. That I can finish this work. Nehemiah went to Shemaiah's house. The Bible said. Shemaiah was a prophet of God. And when he went to his house. Shemaiah said let's go to the temple boy. This is a prophet in God's house. Listen the enemy is going to come in right here in God's house. That's why we have to have the spirit of discernment. That's why we have to know who we are in God. I remember going to church and this woman always dressed in white. As a young person, I said, how this woman always dressing in white? And one of the mothers, the elders said, but she's a witch. I said, she's a witch? And she's sitting in the house of the Lord? Hallelujah. Listen to me. Shemaiah, the Bible said, Shemaiah told Nehemiah, let's go, let's go into the temple. If we, if we know the Bible, the Bible says that no one, only the priests were allowed to go in the temple. And sometimes they tie a rope and a bell. So in case if the priest is in sin, they will pull him out. Here is a prophet telling Nehemiah, come, let us go into the temple. It was a setup. The Bible said that Nehemiah was hired. He was hired. This is a man in the house of God. He was hired. Listen, God is getting ready to do some stuff. If we don't get it right. Listen, oh my God. This man was a hired man. He was hired to trap Nehemiah. So Nehemiah can lose his character, his influence amongst God's people. Why do you think the enemy comes after you? He wants to stain your name. He wants you to be a, pro a reproach. That's why we have to be watchful and alert. Nehemiah say, a man like me. I tell all you, Nehemiah know who he was, you know. A man like me going to the house of the Lord. He refused. He refused to go. There are some people going to come right here in the house of the Lord. They're going to sit right by us. That's why I said be discerning. The Bible says in 1 Peter 5, 8, be sober, be vigilant. Because the adversary, the devil is like a roaring lion. He is seeking the devil is not sitting down and waiting for you to make him listen he's coming after you he wants you to falter and fail he wants you to abort that mission that purpose in your life you have purpose and destiny to accomplish Jesus my God the Bible said when Jesus came on the scene and I'm closing when Jesus came on the scene, Jesus, the Bible said he went to, jo to the Jordan River. He went and he got baptized. And that's in Matthew from 1 to 10 to 42. That's the starting of Jesus' ministry. 
He went to the Jordan River. He was baptized by John the Baptist. He was led by the Holy Spirit into the wilderness. He was tempted. He was tried. The enemy left him for a season. He came out and he began to do the work. He called his disciples. He began to teach his disciples, my God. That's why we are here. We are to teach each other the word of God. So we can strengthen each other. It's not me. I know all. And I'm sharing it with no one. Listen, we ought to be our brother's keeper. As you go up, let the other one come up too. The Bible said, my God, he taught his disciples. And then he went about healing, delivering, set free. Listen, Jesus did so many miracles. It cannot be recorded in the Bible. I used to wonder that when I was young. I didn't understand it, but I understood it now. I said, but if Jesus is God, that, is, that was all the miracles. Listen, they couldn't contain what Jesus did. Jesus was working the work, my sister. He was working the work. The Bible said when the time came, when we read in Matthew 27 and 28, my God, the time came for him, oh God, to present his body as the living sacrifice. He went to the cross willingly. Willingly he gave his life, my God. Willingly he laid down his life. The Bible said he was spat upon. He was bruised, my God. He was beaten. For you and for me. That's why this morning we can sit here in the house of God. Because Jesus finished his work. Oh God. Jesus finished the work. He went to the cross. He was nailed. He said it is finished. Jesus finished the redemptive work. And the Bible said on the third day he rose. He was buried and on the third day he rose. And he went about and then he was ascended into heaven. The Bible said he's making intercession for you and I. You know, when I think about that, I feel good. Because sometimes when we slip and we fall, Jesus is there. Father, forgive them. Father, forgive them. God, I love them. God is making intercession for you this morning. Are you working the work this morning? Jesus finished his work. The Bible said Nehemiah finished the walls in 52 days. God dropped something in my heart when I was preparing the message. He said, do not let your expiry date come and you fail to start. What did I say? Do not let your expiry date come and you fail to start. That's a dangerous place to be in. We need to start the work of God. We need to do whatever it takes, listen, to bring the people into the house of God. We need to go by the highways and the byways and declare who Jesus is. God was preparing his disciples. He was sending them out. He said, listen, you're all going to suffer for my sake. But they were willing to go. When you read about these men, how they die, my God. They were willing to die the death for Jesus. Are we willing to die for God? We say, Lord, take it all, God. I give it all to you. Are we really, do we really mean what we say? I want to encourage us this morning. These men, could we stand? These men had a mind to work. They had a mind to work, the Bible said. They worked with weapons in one hand. And my husband is a builder. It's difficult to work with one hand, you know. But they had weapons on their side. They had weapons in their hand. They were willing and ready to fight for the work of God. Are we ready? Are we willing this morning? Ecclesiastes 9 10 says, Whatever your hands find to do, do it with all your might. 
for there is no work no device no knowledge no wisdom in the grave listen when you're dead you cannot do work for God you cannot work for God while you have the strength while you have the youth listen work it work it don't worry about how you start if you make mistakes so what you will get there get back up if you stumble if you fall listen do not remain there get back up God wants you to finish it and for some of you you have been contemplating should I should I not God says it's time to start it's time to start it's time to finish start it and you will end well but start it with God this morning I want to invite the worshipers as they come hallelujah hallelujah God is worthy to be praised this morning could we lift our hands in the house of God this morning God wants you to finish it this morning whatever it is whatever it is that you have started God says you can finish it but you have to finish it in him you have to start it in him God said when you start it I I will take you through the middle part God says I will walk you through it and you will be able to complete it too many times we hold on to ourselves and say God I will do it to be God start us eh? and then all of a sudden we let go of God let God be right through it so you can finish it well I want us to lift our hands all eyes closed this morning I want to ask this morning is there anyone at the sound of my voice you don't know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior and you want to say sister Michelle I heard what you said and I know that there is a God but I don't know him and I want to know this God that you're talking about this God that says I can start and I can finish well if you're in this congregation and you don't know Jesus Christ I just want you to come you're here and you don't know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior do not go back home the way you came this is your time to meet with God is there anyone here this morning that does not know Jesus Christ I take it that we all save Praise the Lord. You're okay. If there is anyone here that needs prayer this morning, I want you to come. If you know God has placed something in your heart, but you haven't started as yet, and maybe you have started and you have, you have not completed it or you, you stopped. Listen, God says to get back up and start again. Maybe you're having difficulty with whatever God has placed inside of you, you do, you're not sure. Listen, God will make the vision plain for you. I want you to come this morning. If this is you, if you know there is this burning in your heart, you want to do great and mighty things for God. Listen, there is plenty work in the house of God. There is plenty work in the kingdom of God. Our young people, listen, God is calling you. He has equipped you, your parents, some of you of God have brought you from a young age into the house of God. Some of us are sitting right here and we are saying, I'm too old. Listen, you're not too old. When we read the Bible, those men were 900, 700 years and they were working vigilantly for God. I want to invite you to come. I want to invite the ministers to come and pray with them. All the ministers, those who are here this morning, I want you to come. God wants to meet with you this morning. God has a plan and a purpose for everyone, every single person here. Thank you for coming, sister. You're young and you're not too young to serve God. 
God can use anything once you make yourself available. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah.
Even when I can see it, you're working. Even when I can feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I can see it, you're working. Even when I can feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when
Hallelujah. So at this time, we want to close off on Facebook. I want to say, do have a good week, and don't let the week have you, and that we love you at St. James Pentecostal Church. As we sing the doxology, consider yourself dismissed on Facebook. Amen. Pray.